If there's one thing I really like in life, food-wise, it's a good pie. A really good, fresh beef steak pie with a nice rich gravy uh, with all the trimmings. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. Hi guys and welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to another episode of the Food Review UK. Today we're going to be making a beef and ale pie with um, Stilton and bacon. So let me just take you over to the hob area and show you the ingredients that we will be using. So I've got, that is about 500 grams of um, lean stewing steak or stewing beef. And what I've done with that, I did this overnight. I um, seasoned it with salt and pepper, garlic and thyme, um, and a few mixed mixed herbs, all, all dried mixed herbs, and left that overnight to, to kind of marinate. We'll be using Wickwall Brewery Real Ale. Um, this is called Bob. It's actually a very, very nice pint of ale to, to drink. Uh, Danish Blue Cheese, because I couldn't get Stilton. Um, some chopped bacon and over here we have chopped uh, mushroom, carrot and onion. So they're the ingredients for the pie and the, the pastry, I'll be honest, um, I'm using ready rolled um, pastry because life's just too short to be, um, to be making pastry. So um, that's that. So, like the hob, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook the, um, the beef and the bacon first in a little bit of butter and olive oil. So the pan is nice and hot. I've got some butter in there and some olive oil. And in goes first, sorry, <laughs> the bacon. Now, I put olive oil in with the butter because that will stop the butter from burning. Um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can cook it all in, in olive oil. But I think the butter just gives it that extra richness and that extra creaminess, which, which I really like. So the bacon I've used is um, pancetta. So, which you can find in most kind of supermarkets nowadays or deli counters. Um, and it's a really nice cured salty Italian bacon. I'm using unsmoked uh, for this. Am I using unsmoked? Yes, I am. Um, for this, because I find smoky bacon and smoky pancetta is just too strong. The flavours are too strong. Um, and I can overpower the, the other ingredients. So I've gone for unsmoked. So I'll just leave that to, to brown. I want a nice golden brown colour on there. And then as soon as that is is done, we'll um, we'll start to cook the, the stewing steak. So as you can see now, the that's a bit better. The bacon is nicely, nicely golden brown, um, so that's ready to to come out of the pan. While um, I've been doing that, I've preheated my oven at 250 degrees. Um, I don't know what that is in, in gas mark, but I usually just say, just put your oven on as high as it'll go to, to preheat it because then you can always just turn it down. So I'm taking out the bacon, but leaving in all of the, all of the juices that it's cooked in. So in there now is, a, is the butter, is the oil, and a good bit of bacon fat. And this will all um, add to the, to the flavor of the gravy in the, in the pie. I first did this recipe uh, a few years ago actually and it, it went really really well uh, I haven't really done it since so this is kind of my first time 
redoing an old recipe. So hopefully it'll turn out okay. So in goes the beef. In it goes. Again, what I want to do with this is to seal the meat. I don't want to cook it, I just want to sear it. So I want to get as much golden brown colour. I thought I was on fire then. Um, golden brown colour on there as possible. Um, as soon as it is golden brown, I'll take it out the pan, uh, leave it to rest, and then cook off the, the vegetables with a bit of either plain flour or corn flour. Um, it doesn't matter which one you use because flour will thicken the sauce either way. Whether you use plain flour or corn flour, it really doesn't matter. Um, I'll probably use corn flour because that's all I've got. Um, <laughs> but if you've only got plain flour, then, then that's absolutely fine as well. Obviously what you will need um, with this recipe as well is seasoning. So make sure you've got salt and pepper and any other seasons you want to put in there. I put thyme and a few of the dried mixed herbs, but you can pretty much put anything you want in there, as long as obviously it tastes nice. Um, I think food is all about individual tastes, and what might taste absolutely heavenly to some person might taste absolutely vile to another person. So it, it all really just does depend on, on personal taste. So this is getting quite a nice bit of colour on it now. Give it a minute or so more, and then we'll take it out. The beef, as you can see now, is nicely brown. I mean, this is fairly lean, lean beef. Um, so there isn't that much kind of golden brown colour, because obviously a golden brown uh, colour, it goes golden brown, because obviously the fat has... Um, has charred a little and that's what gives it the, the golden brown colour. Um, so because this is quite lean, it hasn't really gone that golden brown, but that is absolutely fine. Um, because this will be just as nice, just as juicy and just as tender as anything with a heap load of fat in it. Um, so, so really don't worry about it. Um, I know we're kind of living in an age where, you know, fat is everybody's worst nightmare and enemy and this, that and all the other. But I think fat is flavour and like it or not, if you want something to taste relatively okay, I think you've got to have a bit of fat in there just to to give it a bit of a, a bit of a boost. But that's just my opinion, so. But anyway, anybody who follows me on Instagram will know exactly my thoughts on kind of healthy food. Um, it's all right, but I just don't do a lot of it. A lot of my cooking tends to be quite rich, quite, quite comfort, comforting, comfort food. Right, in goes our veg. So, oh, there's a mushroom. So onions, carrot, mushroom, all goes in there. Usually, I wouldn't put mushroom in uh, in a pie dish or not one of my pie dishes anyway, because I don't really like mushroom. Um, but it's only because my other half does that I've decided. Well, why not? Plus, I had some mushrooms in the fridge that, that needed using. So I'm going to soften the veg a bit, let the onions go slightly caramelised, not too caramelised, um, and then I'll add the, the flour, let that cook out. I'll then reintroduce the beef and the bacon, and then we'll then pour in the, the real ale. I'll also put in a bit of tomato puree just to give it a really uh, bit of a tang because obviously beef and tomato work quite well together anyway. Um, 
So I'll put that in when we reintroduce the beef. Uh, we'll then put the, the ale in and a stock pot as well. Uh, and then hopefully that will be that done. And then it's just a case of putting the lid on and let it bubble away for two, three hours or however long you want to cook it for uh, until the, the beef is nice and tender and then assembling it into a pie dish. Um, if you want the recipe to this particular dish then I will upload it onto the Instagram page which is Food Review, Food Review UK also the uh, Facebook page which is still Uncle Pete's Kitchen uh, I don't know why Facebook is quite reluctant to let me change it to the Food Review UK but I've got this ongoing battle with them at the moment to try and get it changed um, but it looks like it's a battle I'm not going to win um, which is really annoying because for kind of brand purposes if you like I've got two different things going on when really it's the same thing but it is what it is so um, yeah look out for, for the Facebook page Uncle Pete's Kitchen Instagram Food Review UK and of course um, everything will be on YouTube as well. I will get around to updating the blog site as well. I haven't um, updated it in quite a while now because I've been away um, quite recently. Um, so I've kind of neglected the blog site for, for a little while, which is a bit north of me. But I will get around to, um, to doing something with it and updating it and, and getting it a bit more fresh and up together. So there is the, the veg, as you can see the mushrooms have wilted down quite quite a lot. The onions have become quite soft. The carrots are still <coughs> excuse me, obviously still quite tough and hard. Um it's gonna take a while for those to, to cook through but that's not a problem. So what we want to do now is reintroduce the bacon and the beef so in it goes and you will get all the rested juices from there as well which is fine because again that's flavour give that a good mix make sure all the meat and all the veg is all mixed in together. I'm just gonna turn the heat down slightly and as you can see that is all mixed in there. Right, what I'm going to do now is hopefully without destroying my cupboards <laughs> he says is find the tomato puree and of course with hindsight I should have done this before I turn the camera back on so what I'll do is I'll pause for a bit because I can see all of this coming at me on my face um, which will be highly embarrassing I'll be back in a sec okay so I've got my tomato puree I'm just gonna put you know, a really huge amount but A dollar or two in there we'll just add to some of it the dishes richness so when that goes now you can do this with pretty much any meat you want you don't have to do it with beef you can do it if you so wish with with lamb um, you can do it with pork pork cheek actually is very good for uh, a slow cooked dish like this um, so it's whatever you feel is best next for the flour I did say self raising flour earlier on but I've actually found some plain flour I forgot I had this so what you want 
is two, one, two, maybe one for love. Three generous tablespoons of either plain flour or corn flour. Did I say self raising before? You just need flour. Um, plain flour or corn flour is absolutely <clears throat> fine for this. And basically, just mix all of that in. And it does look a complete mess at the minute, but that flour will help thicken everything up. Let's add the beer. Now this is from the Wickwall Brewery, which is just down the road from where I live. So it's quite handy. It would be even handier if I had a bottle opener. <laughs> so one of those, and in it goes. Give it a mix. And you can smell already that this is going to be absolutely fantastic. I, I really love steak and ale. Oh, you can't beat it. You cannot beat it. Next is a stock pot from Noor. Uh, by the way, I should point out that I'm not sponsored at all for this video by either Wickwall Brewery or Noor stock pots. Um, it's just Noor make quite a good product, and Wickwall Drew, uh, Wickwall Brew. A really good beer so you know why not use them uh, for, for your cooking but I just want to show you this now because look at that the gravy is really really thickened and that is going to be absolutely delightful now if we can just wobbled if you want to thin that down then just add a splash of water and what I will do is I will do that because you don't want you don't want porridge you don't want a thick gloopy gravy you want a nice smooth silky gravy um, so just keep an eye on that um, if you think it's too thick then just thin it out a bit with some water. Um, if it's too thin, just add a bit more corn flour. What I would recommend you do though, rather than putting corn flour into hot food, because it will tend to go lumpy, is just make a small roux. So just dissolve some, some flour into some water, and then just slowly add it until you get the, the consistency that, that you want but for the, the time being I'm gonna leave that well alone the only thing I need to do is of course taste mm. that is absolutely divine lid on gas off So the oven's hot, um, so what I will do is I will turn the oven right down to about 150, put the pot in and just let that slowly um, bubble away. Do that for about two, maybe three hours 
and that will be absolutely perfect. Um, you can then um, assemble your your pie dish. Then, I mean, you can if you want. Just have this as a as a stew or a casserole. It's not quite going to fit. Take the layer out. Yeah, this makes a really good stew and casserole as well. So if you wanted to do that and just add some dumplings in the end, then that would be just as good and just as tasty as, as anything else. So, well, I'm going to do a pie with this. Um, because you can't beat a pie. Right, in that goes, I'm going to leave that now for a good two or three hours until the meat is really tender and then we'll come back and assemble uh, the pie. The pie's been in the oven now for about an hour, so I'll just uh, bring you over here and uh, just show you, I mean, the gravy is thickened. quite a lot. I, I have put in some water just to just to thin it down a bit so it's not quite so thick and of course in the cooking process some of the liquid evaporates anyway so you don't want it to dry out. So all I'm going to do now is take my blue cheese so I'm using um, Danish blue for this usually use Stilton but I couldn't get any Stilton so this will do just fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put about half of that in. So in that goes. And I'll just mix that through. And obviously because it's quite a big piece of piece of cheese, it's not going to um, to melt straight away. So. I'll pop the lid back on the pot. And stick it back in the oven. Again, still at about 150. For another hour. And then check on it once that has, um, has cooked through. The meat is quite tender already. Um, so now I'm just waiting for for the cheese to melt and for all those those flavours to um, to absorb into the gravy and then we can assemble the pie dish. I've got my pie dish already. Uh, it's not a proper pie dish but it'll do. Um, I'm going to line the bottom with butter and flour so the pastry doesn't stick. One layer of pastry on the bottom, fill it in, lay pastry on the top, egg wash in the oven. 20 minutes, half an hour until it's golden brown and the pastry is obviously cooked through and then you are good to go. I'm going to serve this with some roast potatoes and spinach and um, I will be back soon um, to show you how I assemble the, the pie. These potatoes that I'm going to do are really, really simple. I've just got some <clears throat> small salad potatoes. You can use any potato. Um, you like but I just use these um, small Jersey Royals just because um, they needed using up um, and they are quite nice roasted and uh, I'm gonna do good good slug of uh, British rapeseed oil on there like that and then of course salt and pepper so I've just got some sea salt, on that goes, ground black pepper, some garlic granules, you can use fresh garlic if you wish, but the thing with powdered garlic is A, it keeps longer, B, 
B, the flavour intensity is a lot stronger. And C, you can do a lot more with it as well. Uh, fresh garlic tends to go off and, and burn. That's just some dry thyme and some mixed herbs as well that I'm going to put in there. A lot of people say, you know, you should use fresh, fresh this and fresh that. And yeah, you know, we'd all love to use fresh ingredients where we can and, you know, it's, it's very good. But the truth is, dried ingredients are A, cheaper and B, last longer. And they taste just as good and you can use them in, in everyday cooking and they are absolutely fine. Um, you can get them in virtually every supermarket, um, deli, corner shop, anywhere really. So they're so accessible, they're virtually in, in everybody's cupboard. So there we go, so that's the, the potatoes done. I pop those into the oven when the pie is cooked because I want to put these on a really high heat because I want them to <coughs> excuse me <coughs> crisp up really well um, I don't want kind of a, a, a mushy potato I want something that's quite quite crispy and crunchy um, so the pie is not long um, ready to come out the oven anyway now um, so I'll put these in and then they put the pastry on top of that, the pie mixture, I should say. <clears throat> I'm still yet to assemble the pie. So I will check back in in a few moments time, about half an hour or so, and um, give you an update. So the potatoes are now in the oven, slowly roasting away. I've got them on a high heat, so I'll turn the, the oven right up to 250 degrees. So to let them get exposed to the heat and hopefully crisp up real nice um, to go with our dinner. So it's time to assemble the pie. And what I have here is just roll um, short crust pastry. And the one thing I like about this stuff is that it all comes ready to go. I put some uh, butter and flour in my pie dish. So all's left to do now is open the pastry. You can make your own pastry, of course you can. But to be honest, I don't like life too short for uh, making your own pastry. So it's just better to get it ready rolled. So gently fold that into the dish and it will crack, no doubt. But what you can do is with the excess pastry is um, is just filling the the gaps with that. So get all the pastry into your dish like so, and then with the excess pastry you can basically plug any holes that occur. Now it is probably always best to do this at room temperature because then you avoid the cracks in the pastry. But At the end of the day, it's going to be put into the oven, cooked, and then taken out and cut about and everything anyway. So there's no point in stressing too much about 
the appearance of, of the bottom of the dish, really, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Um, people want to, you know, get the, the bottom, the bottom of the case perfect, then by all means they can do that, but for me it's not really that important. The top I think is the, the most important bit of a pie because especially if you're doing a dinner party because that's the bit people people will see. So yes, there we go. So just trim off any excesses of pastry that you don't want. Of course what some people do as well is they they don't have a bottom layer of pastry they just have a, a top layer and to me that's that's not a pie that's not a proper pie I like to have a top layer and a bottom layer and I can't stand it when I go into a restaurant or a pub especially a pub pubs should really know better and they have the pie of the day on the menu and it comes with like a puff pastry lid. I cannot stand that. But that's probably just me being a bit of a an old fart. So that is the pot the bottom of the pie dish. All lined with pastry. Um and hopefully it will taste good. Now to add the, the filling. I've taken the pie mixture out of the oven for a little while just to, to cool and to let the, the flavours kind of mellow a little bit. But now we just spoon the mixture, I mean this smells absolutely incredible and it tastes just as good as well because I have had a little taste, well you've got to haven't you? So just spoon the mixture in, I think what I've done is I've done far too much as usual so looks like this is what tomorrow's dinner will look like as well. I think I might do a, a stew or a casserole with this tomorrow instead of a pie. Uh, I'll do some uh, dumplings on top. So just layer it on. Make sure you've got plenty of meat, plenty of veg. I'm not going to fill it all the way up to the to the brim I'm just gonna just stop short of the of the top and I don't know whether you can no I won't tip it because if it goes on the floor you'll hear me swear but so you can see it's just just shy of the of the top so now what I'm gonna do get my second layer of pastry and that is this will be our lid so let's bring this over again And then I'll just lay this over like so. And just fold the edges in. Uh, 
Um, you can crimp if you want to. But I'm just going to fold the edges over like so. Just make sure it's all neatly together. And again, you're probably going to get cracks, which is fine. But what you can do is just pat patch over those cracks with uh, some more pastry. Again, I think with a homemade pie, you're not looking for perfection. And I don't think, unless you, you know, you're like a professional chef or something, I don't think you're really going to get complete perfection. Because it's rustic cooking. It's homemade. And it is what it is. So... If you want to, you can just crimp the edges just to make it look pretty or whatever, but I just think it looks better. A little bit, a little bit messy, if I'm honest. I'll put a little hole in the top. Just so that any steam can escape. And then the last thing to do is an egg wash. And this will give the pastry that golden look to it. Now, as you can tell, I don't, I'm not a professional baker. I don't do this all the time. So this doesn't look like a professional, like what a professional would do. I'm just, you know, someone who just cooks at home. So if it looks like a dog's dinner, then it looks like a dog's dinner, as long as it doesn't taste like a dog's dinner. Um, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but I know for a fact it's not going to taste like a good orange dinner because I've tasted it and it tastes quite nice. <laughs> so, there we have it. That is the pie ready to go in the oven. 20 minutes, half an hour, job done. Um, yeah, the recipe will be uploaded onto the blog site onto Instagram, onto Facebook, so keep your eye out for those. And don't forget to like this video, um, share it if you wish to, and subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications um, to be notified of late, the latest videos. But until next time, thanks for watching and I'll chat to you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>